All right, I am filming this on a Friday morning uh, because if I do my job successfully by the end of this video lesson, you will understand that Friday mornings are very special. So if at any point that it hits you during this video lesson, leave a comment underneath the video saying, Friday mornings are special. Four words. That's what I want you to recognize some point during this video lesson. Um, let me explain why. So if you've seen my DVDs, namely Tim Tactics, I talk about Friday morning short squeezes. I also have hundreds of video lessons talking about this. And if you study my video lessons over time, there are now 5,000 plus of them. You know that Fridays are the single most dangerous day to short sell. Why? Because a lot of shorts, and remember shorts are those people who like to bet against stocks. They bet on failure. They bet on lower prices. Statistically, logically, they're correct, but on Fridays, guess what? Hype can take over, and a lot of shorts don't want to be in short squeezes. They don't want to be in losing positions on Fridays when stocks just keep going up and up and up. Over the weekend, these stocks tend to gain more hype, and they can really spike big on Monday. So as a short seller, and I've made millions shorting, I've made millions going long, but as a short seller, I know to protect myself going into weekends. And for you, most of you guys don't like short selling, but it's good for you to learn how a short seller thinks. And that is why we have Friday short squeezes, because I am not the only short seller who is scared to short these stocks on Friday. And if you do short them on Friday, you have to cover them very quickly because things can get out of hand very quickly. As you can see, the stock market right now has only been open for an hour. Let me get rid of pre-market trading so that you can see uh, this is a one minute chart today. So KURA is spiking huge. Actually, I need to show you after hours yesterday. Um, so they had positive news after hours yesterday and the stock spiked from seven to 10. And then pre-market came down to eight today, okay? And I saw a bunch of other chat rooms filled with newbies and they were saying, let's short it at nine and a half, let's short it at 10, 10 is resistance. This is why it's so dangerous to listen to newbies. They don't understand the risks that they take. Even when they make money, they take ridiculous risks. I would never, ever, ever short a stock like KURA at 9.5 or 10 or anything. If you actually look at my watch list from last night, this is why I send out my watch list the night before. KURA was my number one stock to watch. If you see here... Um, on my commentary, I say, this is a new biotech uh, winner after hours last night. And even though it has an ugly long-term chart, it might just run link, and I meant to say like, like NLNK, so watch its volume closely. So I'm looking at this as a potential long, okay? I didn't want to chase it. I specifically said I wouldn't chase any of these on the long side, potential dip buys only. So I underestimated how much it could spike or how quickly it could spike. But at least I knew that it could spike, okay? And that's because I recognize the power of Friday mornings. And I'm glad I prepared a lot of you guys for this morning spike. Uh, fantastic job, I missed it. I actually did bought uh, HIMX, which went nowhere and I cut my losses. Um, I actually lost a little bit of money today. Uh, but don't cry for me. You know, I made nearly $9,000 yesterday on these two trades. So if you make $9,000 in a day and then lose a hundred or two, you're still up over two days. That's how I roll. I was wrong about HIMX. HIMX uh, was my dip buy attempt. And on this one, I actually thought, okay, the stock is down a lot over two days. The company came out and they supported their business. They put out a press release reaffirming their business. And I thought that this could spike on a Friday morning. Because again, on Friday mornings, I'm very speculative. Um, I'm not necessarily just gonna buy earnings winners. I'm gonna buy stocks that I think can run on a Friday morning. I was wrong on HIMX. I bought it around 1025-ish. I was out around 1020-ish, it's down to 10. No biggie, okay? Worst case scenario, I'm losing 20 cents a share. But then you have plays like KURA, where the thing runs, you know, $4 a share. And then also NLNK ran quite nicely from the 13s all the way up to the 18s. This was a nice Friday short squeeze. And you can see here, yesterday after hours, it was downtrending. 
Today, pre-market, it was downtrending. And then right at the open, when the big volume comes in, you can see the volume here, big ass short squeeze, NLNK. And now I got to give props uh, to some students because, you know, I, I'm down a little bit on the day today, but a lot of you guys are recognizing the power of Friday short squeezes. Uh, where do I begin? BB7, uh, you know, saw KURA. He's loving stocks to trade. Um, so good job, BB7. Where was another one? Uh, oh, also BITCF. I got to congratulate people on this. So BITCF, it doesn't matter that this is a Friday. This doesn't really apply to my Friday lesson. But this one was a sketchy stock um, that was up quite a bit. Uh, and then it got halted. It had three green days in a row, but it finished near the bottom um, of its range on the third day. And so a lot of people went short. They got a little lucky that it was halted by the SEC uh, for two weeks. And, you know, this is a good pattern to short. You want to short the first red day or on this one, you know, this is kind of an inverted hammer. Um, and it opened down, you know, 66%. So a few people were short. Uh, this guy made a hundred bucks. So when I go through all these trades, it's either NLNK, KURA, or BITCF. These are the three big plays. Um, let's see. I like this one. It's not about just big gains. Okay. I'm going to give karma. Karma, by the way, when I give you karma, it's kind of like a Facebook like, but this is our version. Uh, Arch Royal 710. In KURA at 1080, out at 13, $270 profit for a small account. Okay, so he is making like $2 plus a share, and that's awesome. Uh, here is Robbie Surf's made 500. He said, Thanks for the heads up because he read my watch list. Good job, Robbie. Uh, let's see. Uh, HM Stars got in at uh, uh, 10 and out at 13.35. Very nice. Uh, Samuel Ray, uh, first big win for him. Good job. There was another one. There were so many people to congratulate. Andrew made 180. Uh, let's see. Here's Ella Dawn uh, in KURA at 855, out at 960. Met my goal, left plenty on the table. And don't feel bad. If you sell too soon, you know, this is a good lesson. You made a dollar a share. That's damn good. Uh, let's see. There was another guy. Uh, where was it? There we go. Aparicio88, and his name is Mark. He was short, BITCF, biggest win by far, made $5,700 on one trade. So I got to give him props. And then in the challenge chat room, uh, Trader Jomu, first trade ever, KURA, 1280 out at 1370. Watch for three days this week and finally pulled the trigger. Good patience. Beautiful. I'm going to give this karma. Old Not Dead, 250 shares, KURA, 1009, out at 1272. Think I got out too quick, but we'll take the profit, still learning. That is damn good. Making nearly $3 a share is not out too quick. That's damn good. A lot of you guys are worried about trying to catch the exact top. Don't be. Uh, here's Shipper21, bought NLNK at 11, sold at 12 yesterday, too early apparently. Again, you made a dollar a share. Don't worry about the money that you leave on the table. Uh, here's Mr. King Tyler, in at 1075, out at 1275 with 100 shares, $200. Beautiful. Roland Wolf made 1200 uh, on NLNK short yesterday and covered before the close. And he's glad that he did. And mind you, Roland Wolf now is over 200000 in profits. Why isn't it not pulling up? Um, he's over $200,000 in profits. Why can I not right-click on this? What's going on here? 
I don't know. He started with 4,000. He's over 200,000. I've done interviews with him. Go look it up. Uh, but let's see. I'm getting to this. And Roland also made 2,500 on NLN or on KURA today. He was long. And he said, small position, but he'll take the 2,500. And I said, that ain't small. Remember where you were nine months ago? You know, <laughs> that's crazy, right? Back then, nine months ago, he would have had to go all in with 300 shares. Now he's taking a small position and making $2,500 share, $2, in 20 minutes. Pretty funny. Uh, and his trade on it was, uh, well, this guy, Dip Buck, KURA, 995 out at 1055, made a quick 600. Ah, here's Roland Wolf. Uh, thanks to Stocks to Trade yesterday, he was in KURA at 850 and out at 1075, and the rest just now at 1140. So he nailed that, and he left some on the table. But this is who I'm, I'm waiting for, uh, saving the best for last. Mark Crook, $21,000 in profits on BITCF, locked in. So, so proud of you, man. Congrats again. He is now over $800,000 in profits. And, you know, that's just amazing. He was short. So those are the plays. Uh, BITCF, I mean, it, it just so happened that it opened on a Friday. That's not the main point. Today's main point is that KURA is a Friday morning spiker, okay? And it just got a lot of volume right when the market opened. That's why I said watch its volume closely, and it just squeezed those shorts. NLNK, same kind of thing. Massive, massive squeeze. I mean, we're talking $5 a share in 30 minutes. Okay, in KURA, we're talking really the breakout was from 9 to 13. So $4 a share in 30 minutes. This is what makes Friday morning so special. If you see these kinds of runners, and you know, granted, these are $12, $13 stocks, a little higher price than what I would prefer. But the point remains that these are the speculative plays that are hot right now. They have the news, they're moving. And that opens the door for Friday morning spikes. So, you know, you look for the big percent winners, use stocks to trade the night before, read my watch list the night before, and then you're looking for big volume. And you can see these massive, I mean, this is, these are one minute candles of volume. In one minute, it's trading over 200,000 shares, okay? It's trading nearly 300,000 shares. Massive, massive volume for this stock on KURA. Um, and then NLNK, massive, massive volume. You can see here, the volume per minute is two, three, four hundred thousand. Okay, so some like newbies in some chat rooms focus on stocks that trade two or three or four hundred thousand all day, and that's a joke. If you really want to take advantage of the Friday morning short squeezes, you look for the most active stocks, you look for the biggest percent winners, and you try to ride these morning spikes as they take out the day high. You can see here, you know, big volume right at the open, but it really didn't take out the pre-market high until right here, 9.41 a.m. And then you can see here by, you know, 9.46, I mean, five minutes, it's at 14.65 up to 16.85. So $2 a share in five minutes. And then it takes out the day high right here from the 16th to the 18th, another $2 a share. So I really like, you know, it's, it's nice, all well and good to say, oh, look how much it's up. But if you focus on buying right at the day high with the big volume, you know, that is the, the key point to buy at. And that's why you see so many of my students banking. They're not just holding from 13 to 18. I mean, that's, you know, near impossible. But if you buy at the breakouts and you try to make a dollar or two on a higher price stock, or maybe it was a lower price stock, you try to make 30, 50 cents a share. Um, that is a good plan. Here's KURA. You know, it's up, okay? And it took out the day high right near the market open, but then it, it consolidated. And then right here, you can see uh, it took out the day high at around 9.42 a.m. And then by 9.59 a.m., I mean, we're talking 18 minutes where it takes out the day high at 10.40. And then here it's at 13.40. Three bucks a share in 18 minutes. A dollar a share every six minutes. So, 
Now these stocks don't matter, okay? Friday morning spikes have come. Maybe they'll go a little bit more. Maybe they'll fade. I'm not interested now. That's why I'm doing video lessons now. I'm not focused on trying to trade these. I want you to recognize the power of Friday mornings. And if I did my job by the end of this video lesson, which I hope I did, please leave a comment saying Friday mornings are special. And that is today's lesson. Um, I'll see you guys in the chat room uh, tomorrow, but I'm focused on my second TED Talk that I'm giving right now, so I got to focus for a few days, but I'll be in the chat room and I'll look for more plays. I'm always looking, no matter what I'm doing in life, no matter what time zone I'm in, I'm always looking for these plays, especially on Friday mornings. Thank you.